Hello from Paris. If you watched my last video, I was in London, but this morning I took the Eurostar down across the English Channel and into Paris. It was a really early train at six in the morning because that was when it was the cheapest. So of course that's when I booked. It took about two and a half hours. It was really smooth. It went by quickly. It was a little cramped in the standard class, especially since I ended up at a table with three other people, but otherwise it was fine. I haven't really done much here in Paris, except I got a croque monsieur sandwich, and then I took like a four hour nap because I'd been up since like 3.30, but now I am just kind of wandering. I have come to the Perry Lachey Cemetery. Oh, also I want to say that I've been to Paris before. I'm only here for like three days. Um, back in 2019, my mom and I came for my birthday and it was a great trip. So I've pretty much done and seen all the major attractions here. So I'm not really gonna go see any of the top attractions or you know go in the museums and stuff i will wander around tomorrow i have a plan of just kind of walking and going to see the eiffel tower and a bunch of other attractions from just the outside but there's only two places that i plan on actually going into and i will show you those tomorrow but for now, here I am at Perry Lachey. I did come here on my last trip and I absolutely love it. It's so big, beautiful and quiet and just peaceful. If you don't know anything about the cemetery, I think it's the largest in Paris. And there's a lot of famous people buried here, including Edith Piaf, the French singer, um, Oscar Wilde, um, Jim Morrison of The Doors, and a ton of other, you know, French people that I don't know, but are famous for the French, I suppose. It's just so, big beautiful i'll show you some footage so you can understand i love a good cemetery i've definitely said it in other vlogs so i'm just gonna wander in and take some photos Okay, well, it's 5.30 and I guess the cemetery is closed, so I'm gonna leave. There's a park about 20 minute walk from here that I was gonna go to as well, so I'm gonna go check that out. Okay, I've made it to Parc de Belleville. I was going in the right direction, but then I thought I was going in the wrong direction. So I turned back around and then I had to turn back around, but I have made it. It is very beautiful, lots of greenery, flowers, lots of people just lounging in the grass and walking around. It's really nice. There's views of the city. It is very hilly. I am gonna kind of explore a little bit Okay, I've walked from the top of the park down to the bottom. I don't wanna walk all the stairs back up, so I'm gonna go back out onto the street and just head towards the hotel. I am getting hungry, so I'm gonna go to the grocery store, hopefully find a salad or something healthy to eat, and then call it a night. I am really excited for tomorrow. It's gonna to be a lot of walking and exploring, so I will see you there. Hello from my second day here in Paris. I'm at Ile de la Cité, which I'm probably saying wrong. I know I'm probably gonna mispronounce a lot of French things. Like usual, I suck at pronouncing things. Even though I took four years of French in high school, my teacher said I butcher the language, so it is what it is. I can read it okay, but I can't really understand it when it's spoken, and I only know how to say like basic words for the most part, but Anyway, I am just standing here in front of Notre Dame, which I'm excited to see a little bit close up because last time I was in Paris was the day after she caught on fire, which was a tragedy, but they are working on rebuilding Notre Dame and maybe one day I will see it complete again and be able to go inside. But for now, I'm just gonna see it from the outside. I've already gone to St. Chapelle, which is another beautiful church nearby and it is just gorgeous. I'll go ahead and let that footage play for you. Completed in 1248, Saint Chapelle is a chapel in the old Palais de la Cité, the palace where the King of France resided until the 14th century. It was originally built to house religious relics such as the crown of thorns. The church is a great example of Gothic architecture with a pretty purple and blue color palette inside. In the upper chapel, the 50-foot tall stained glass windows are jaw-dropping. They are supposed to be extra amazing on a sunny day, but alas, it was cloudy when I was there. 
Each stained glass panel depicts a different biblical figure. Most of the panels are not original, but instead are reproductions. I highly suggest adding the church to your Paris itinerary. Tickets are 11.50 euro, and you should buy them in advance. It is a rainy day here in Paris, but that is fine. You know what they say about Paris in the rain. I don't know the exact quote, but I'm pretty sure there is one, right? I'll put it on the screen. Anyway, I am gonna go wander over to Palais Garnier next, and that's a gorgeous opera house, and I'm excited to take some photos in there. Like I said yesterday, I've been to Paris before and have gone in most of the museums and monuments, so here's the Louvre from the outside. I won't be exploring it today. If you do ever wanna go to the Louvre, make sure you allow a lot of time because there are so many pieces. I'll put the exact number on the screen, but it's a lot and it does take a long time to see everything. I'll also maybe show some photos from the last time I was here, but yeah, the Louvre, one of the best museums. From the Louvre, I've walked over to Jardin des Tuileries and it's definitely a dreary day so it's not as vibrant as it could be last time i was here it was also april but it was later in the month and it was just gorgeous all the trees were flowering there are a lot of flowers out today though but this is a nice park for a little walk you can't walk on the grass but there's a lot of beautiful statues and like i said flowers and all sorts of fountains The front of Palais Garnier was covered in scaffolding, but that's okay because I came for the grand interior. Home to the Paris Opera, Palais Garnier was commissioned by Emperor Napoleon III. It was opened in 1875 and was named after its architect, Charles Garnier. This is one of the largest opera houses in Europe and it's incredibly opulent with Baroque elements and golden details. I was seriously awed by the marble staircase, all the chandeliers, and fresco covered ceilings. The building cost about 36 million francs to construct, which would be equal to over 300 million euros today. Palais Garnier is also the setting of The Phantom of the Opera, an iconic 1910 novel by Gaston LaRue, which was later adapted into a musical by Andrew Lloyd Webber. A self-guided tour for the opera house costs 14 euro, and I definitely suggest doing it. While I was there, they were rehearsing on the stage, which was really cool to see. The auditorium not only has the biggest opera stage in Europe, but also an amazing chandelier surrounded by a colorful painting. This painting was done by Marc Chagall in 1964. Okay, I've come back to the hotel. I ate a salad from the grocery store. I think I might just stay in the rest of the night. I was gonna go walk around like the Eiffel Tower area, but my feet are really hurting and it's just a cold dreary day and I don't really feel like going out and about. So I think I'm just gonna call it a night. Surprise, it's been two days since my last little video that I filmed. I ended up taking a day trip to Giverne yesterday, which I was originally gonna do today, but I switched it around because of train schedules. But anyway, it is my last day in Paris and I'm excited to wander around and explore some more. I've come to the Montmartre, area which is like the hill where soccer cur is that overlooks the city and stuff and there's just a few little sites i want to see and just wander around the artist district and yeah have some fun and then i'm gonna go down to the eiffel tower because you can't go to paris without seeing the eiffel tower i also slept in today until like 11 so it's already after 12 so the light's not even that good for photos unfortunately but we will see how it goes Of course, I'm not going to go up the soccer curve this time because I did it last time, but I'll show you a photo from the top. Yeah, so definitely come here earlier in the morning when there's not so many crowds. Last time I was here, we got here before the church even opened and there was barely anyone and I was able to get some pretty good photos. Also, because it's so crowded, you want to be aware of pickpockets. I also just saw some people trying to do the scam where like you have to sign a petition, but then they like pickpocket you, I think. So don't fall for anything. Pretty much if you're in any major city and someone tries to hand you something like a rose or to sign a petition or anything, don't take it and just keep moving on.
I spent most of my time in Montmartre wandering and seeking out both popular sites and secret spots. One of the best hidden gems in Montmartre that I visited was this short street with super pretty houses covered in greenery. It was cute and uncrowded. I've now come to the Montmartre Cemetery and it's very nice and peaceful. I'm just gonna wander around. There was only one name I recognized on the list of people, famous people buried here. So I'll go see that grave site and otherwise probably just take some photos and relax. I just met the nicest little old lady and she walked me through the cemetery and told me all about it and where to find this grave I was looking for, but it actually wasn't the person I thought it was, it's the son. So Alexander Dumas, who wrote like The Three Musketeers and a bunch of other books, it was his son who was buried here and she told me the story of him and he wrote this play and or opera and all the drama, so it was really interesting and fun. Okay, I was looking at the map again and it looks like Edgar Degas, the Impressionist painter, is buried here. Hopefully it's not his son. Um, I'm gonna go check that one out. Okay, after getting lost a few times and actually already walking by it and having to loop around and find it for real, I have found Edgar Degas' grave. It says a familia Degas, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, I made a quick pit stop at La Arc de Triomphe and then I have walked to Trocadero with views of the Eiffel Tower and then across the river to another view of the Eiffel Tower at Champ de Mar. Also, I forgot to say that today is the Saturday before Easter and I think that's why it is so incredibly crowded. It's just, <laughs> there's a ton of people out and about. Well, I think I'm gonna start heading back towards the hotel. It is still kind of early, but I don't like to be out at night when I travel, and I also have to pack and get ready for my train tomorrow to, I'm gonna say it wrong, Rouen um, in Normandy, which is my next stop. Thank you for watching this video. It's greatly appreciated. Make sure you subscribe and like, and I will see you next time. Um, back in 2009, 2009? <laughs> 2019 I'm at the Ile de I'm at Ile de la City no I'm probably 